Apologies for the late start. Just had some technical difficulties. And I hope that um, everyone who was in have now come back in. Yes. But welcome. Good morning, everyone. And uh, welcome to the School of Medical Radiation Technology or Orientation Exercise this morning. We have a special welcome for, for our new incoming students to whom I expend, extend, of course, a special welcome to the university because you are first timers and to the students who are returning students to the university. Um, we welcome you to SMRT. We ask for God's blessings on today's proceedings, and we are going to get right into our program. I'm going to begin with some introductions. We have a number of persons lined up to present for you this morning. I'm Carol Rose. I am the acting program coordinator. I will introduce Mr. Colin McKenzie, a lecturer who will take you through the overview of the program. Mr. Darion Walker, who will, a lecturer also, who will speak with you on things technology. The OUR daily platform, the Blackboard Collaborate tool, through which much of your lectures will be delivered and or multipurpose shade aware software. Somebody sharing their screen, sorry. You can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Good, sorry about that. We'll also have Miss Janet McIntosh, a lecturer who will address student affairs. Mrs. Millet Thompson, librarian, who will speak to you on the use of our SMRT library resources. Mrs. Faith Harkow will address the, 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 the clinical program. Ms. Carissa Reed and Mrs. Ashmara Mikulski, our secretaries, will take you through the steps for registration. We also have on staff uh, Mrs. Nicola Millwood, our office attendant. Our student bodies represented this morning and several members of the executive are here to address you somewhere at around 9.30. We have to push that back a bit because of the late start. The first thing I'm going to address you on are what are the changes that are taking place in our program. We ended an academic year and we have started a new one with some unusual, uncommon, unfamiliar, and challenging circumstances. All of this sounds like a negative, doesn't it? But on the positive side, the challenges have presented what I call opportunities to change the way we do things. Of course, as educators, it changes the way that we teach, and for students, it has changed the way that you really learn. Your learning strategies have been upended by the COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, we are all accustomed to, to the stability, the stability of a face-to-face -face situation. And now having to make that radical shift in how we operate is really causing some, is some cause of concern. It is uncomfortable, but it's a situation that we really have to face as, 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 um, as, as persons who must continue in offering and, and, and continuity of education and the learning process. The situation, of course, is still very fluid for us. And of course, we crave your understanding as we adjust to this new norm. You may not get the answers, the immediate answers to your questions, um, but because we have to be guided by the faculty on, and the university, and because some of the, some of the questions you may have are, are novel, then we have to seek guidance on them. And so I ask that you, you bear with us as we, as we journey together through this changing time. Registration, 
Um, regarding, regarding registration, Mrs. Bacos can Ms. Reed will provide some guidance here. Please ensure that you register for all courses for the semester or for the year, if you are allowed to do so at this time. This has been a very troublesome issue for many students and for us, and for us as well. Because when you do not register for your courses, your lecturer is not able to enter your grades on the system at the end of the academic year. And this, of course, can have some negative implications for your grade point average, as well as your academic awards, which are available campus-wide, as well as faculty-wide. Classes begin on Monday. We propose a blended mode. We will use the first week query, second week, to orientate you to your respective courses and to use and how to use the OURVND platform. This is the university's official platform for the administration of your courses. You may find that some lecturers use other platforms for the delivery of lectures, but we need, of course, in the end to utilize the official platform of the university for the administration of final examinations. With what all of this would mean is that you need a laptop and you will need access to reliable internet service. This, of course, is very critical to your attendance at online um, classes and, and participation in the learning process. Of course, your attendance at classes is, is compulsory, whether online or face-to-face. -face. And of course, your handbook will further address this issue. The handbooks are currently under revision to reflect the additional considerations to be made for online delivery. And we will be distributing an, in electronic form um, sometime early next week. We will give you about a week in which to read and return the signature page indicating that you have read and you understand the information provided. The online mode comes with challenges for discipline and for focus, as you may have heard earlier in the orientation on Monday. Some students really do not take the online mode seriously. It becomes a distraction. They're, 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 they're distracted by their immediate environment. And sometimes this is out of their control. But this is your, this is your, your responsibility. See if you, so we, if, if we can crave your indulgence, crave the indulgence rather of those around you, find a quiet place without the distractions. We are going to require that you use your web cameras, of course, during lecture and to participate in the discussions. I find the participation levels low in the online sessions and sometimes when the lecturers call on students, they are really not there. I ask also that you observe a dress code for online and face-to-face -face sessions. And of course, these will be further detailed in your handbook. The timetable, we have sent your timetables and your course outlines, I understand that a group email has been created for the year ones, the incoming group, and you are to be provided the password. Mrs. Bukowski informed me this morning that she has sent you the password. We will use this medium to communicate with you. Please do regular checks on your email messages, especially since you will not be interacting face-to-face -face for a while. Integration into the faculty and university. I encourage you to integrate into the student body, the university clubs, societies, and all, all activities. Of course, bearing in mind that this will require a balancing act on your part so that your academic life does not suffer the fallout. The facilities of the faculty are open and available to you. Ensure that you get your IDs early so that you can access the main and the medical libraries. We also have a small library here at the School of Medical Radiation Technology, situated on the first floor, and Mrs. Thompson will walk you through that information. Wrapping up, I want to speak with you a little about the COVID-19 and how we intend to operate going forward for the semester. The pandemic has introduced some real-time risks to human existence, and which will require us to operate in ways to mitigate these risks. 
We have taken steps, of course, to engage the microbiology department in doing some online training in infection control in the clinical setting, how to don and doff the personal protective equipment, as also they have provided the, us a video clip, which I will distribute to the first years by Monday. I ask that you go through it in, um, in your own time and take a note of all of the, the steps to be taken to protect yourself there. Be vigilant with your health. The university's health center is open to you. If you become ill, you are part of an insurance scheme. I am not sure what, at what point you will really receive your health cards. Uh, but the current procedure for reporting illness is that you call the health center to speak with the doctor or nurse, and then they will further inform you on how to, um, how to proceed. We ask that you sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Maintain your physical distancing, wear your masks, and again, be vigilant about your health. Keep a check on your temperatures, and each time you enter a building and have your temperature checked, ask what the reading is, record it for your own monitoring. The Dean, Dr. Paul, has indicated that classroom space is available to allow for physical distances, so we look forward to our face-to-face -face sessions, which should begin in another two weeks. We have also developed a, what is a screening instrument for you to fill out. Um, the, all it asks is some, just some preliminary information regarding your travel history, etc., cetera, um, your, your contact history, and so on. This information will be kept very confidential and will only be, will only be shared with the relevant healthcare professionals should, uh, should a concern arise with, with that history. Um, the anatomy labs, of course, in, in, um, in, in mitigating risks, the anatomy lab sessions require face-to-face, face, face, face shields, face masks, and laboratory coats. So we give you enough time or sufficient time in which to, 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 to source these resources so that you will operate safely within those environments. I am going to stop here in terms of my introduction, introductory remarks. I am going to ask if at this point, if you do have any questions based on anything that I just um, presented, that you could, I'll give you about two minutes to ask those questions. As best I can, I will see how I can address them. Are there any questions? I could probably take about two or three questions at this point. Any questions? Hi, good morning. Yes, good morning, Ms. Kna. Um, I heard you were speaking about um, getting the IDs early. When you say yes. that, we will be able to take those pictures and then eventually get them. All right. Our, our secretaries will, will meet with the administrators, will um, speak with the administrators to find out when you can do those. But normally it's done early in the semester, like the first week. As a matter of fact, during the orientation week is when they're normally done. But because of the whole situation, the online orientations, we were not able to meet in the physical location to get them done. But I am hoping that um, in, short, in short order, they will inform us when you can come in for those IDs. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Um, hello, good morning. Yes, good morning. I was wondering if there is a specific place that we're supposed to go and source our school coats or lab coats. Okay, I am in touch with, uh, with a provider. And as soon as I get further information regarding the costs, then I will let you know. You will not need it immediately because we will have at least um, two weeks and we can arrange with the anatomy lecturer that she allows you some time to source your to source your, your lab coats and so that you will not be um, disenfranchised by the fact that you do not really have your lab coats. So we'll arrange a session so that those sessions which require those face-to-face -face interactions, you will have your lab coats by then. Okay? Thank you. Okay, I, will, I will give you the further, I'll give you further information um, next week, early next week.
Any other question? Okay. Thank you for your attention. I'm going to now hand over to Mr. Colin McKenzie, who will do the program overview. Uh, thank you very Mr. much. Mr. McKenzie? Yes, Mr. Rose, Good. thank you very much. I'm trying to get Good. my speech here now. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody hearing me? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Are you going to get what sharing, Mr. McKenzie? Yeah, I'm sure yes, you know. Are you, are you guys seeing the PowerPoint presentation there? Yeah. Are you seeing the PowerPoint slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Excellent. You seen it, Ms. Rose? Yes, I'm seeing it. Okay, guys. Well, I'm, I'm calling you guys you now the um, future radiographers because um, you're going to be future radiographers. And um, I'm going through the program overview now. And I will... Um, I will um, try to break it down as simple as possible. And um, before going into the program overview fully, I'm going to give you some idea of the um, of what is radiography and what is some um, common terms. All right, so we're going to move as we go along. Um, the program is an undergraduate program and is a B B BSc in diagnostic imaging. And our section here is radiography, all right? And the question now is what is diagnostic imaging? I'm gonna just break it down so you understand what is diagnostic imaging. And this is um, producing images of the human body or parts of it using sophisticated techniques and technology. An example is um, ultrasound, CT, MRI, mammography, nuclear medicine, and radiography. All right, let's just break this down as we go along. Um, sonography, that's a picture of, um, of a sonographer doing a, a sonogram. And this is actually doing um, parts of the body, images using ultrasound. And that's what the picture looks like, all right? And it is now advanced. And we can look like that, all right? Our next one, what you're doing now is actually just going through some imaging modalities so you understand it. All right. Our next step is a CT, which is computer, computerized tomography. That's how it looks. And our images, um, there's a, that's, that's a brain with a mass actually in it. And it is now advanced. You can see it looking like that nowadays. All right. Then we have MRI, um, which is uh, magnetic resonance imaging. And this uses radio wave, uh, radio signal to produce the image. And it's very sophisticated. Um, okay, go again. And that's our, uh, our equipment. And this is our um, picture as we go along. That's what the picture looks like. Very, very clear. It looks just like an, um, an, an MRI. If we look now, you can see mammography, which is doing images of the breasts. And um, here's our, here's, uh, that's what the equipment looks like. And that's what the breast looks like as we go along on the um, imaging condition. Then we have nuclear medicine which is basically radiography or, or CT or um, mammography taken from inside, outside, all right? And the equipment looks like that and the pictures look like that, all right? So what we just took at a while ago is the different kind of images. Um, we, are, we will be doing what you call radiography, which is um, another modality, another imaging modality. And this is what you guys will be doing. It's actually doing um, images of parts of the body using X-ray. That's a chest X-ray, basically. And um, if you look, you will see, by official definition, radiography is the use of X-rays to take images of structures inside the body. And that image a while ago was the uh, abdomen. This is what an X-ray system looked like. So this is the system that you'll be working with. Um, we'll soon get to the program um, overview. Let's look at two distinct um, definitions of two individuals that are involved in the X-ray department. These are the radiologist and the radiographer. You might hear the term radiologist very often. This is a specialist doctor who does the um, interpretation of the image and the radiographer, you are future radiographers, are the technologists responsible for producing the image. In, the, in Europe, we are called a diagnostic medical radiographer. Um, in the US, we are called radiologic technologists. And in Canada, we are called medical radiation technologists. 
So technically speaking, the radiographer is a healthcare professional who specializes in imaging of human anatomy using X-ray. Why do we um, do this? For disease diagnosis, to assess injury, to check progress of disease, and to evaluate treatment, all right? And our role as radiographer is to position the patient, to position the X-ray source, and to, um, to, to, to make sure the radiation is applied safe, to assist the radiologist, and to clinically analyze the image and to care for the patient, all right? And we have extended role, which is um, venipuncture, training, management, system specialist, and radiology assistant reporting, all right? Now let's look at SMRT and the staff very quickly. SMRT is composed of a, a program coordinator, and she just spoke to you a while ago, that's, that's Mrs. Rose. And we have what you call lecturers, we have in-house lecturers and adjunct lecturers. Um, the, then we have what we call the clinical coordinators, and that's Mrs. Harker and her team. And Mrs. Harker will give you an overview of the clinical um, component of the program later on. I'll be giving the academic part, all right? Then we have our secretarial and auxiliary staff, all right? Now the program is composed of what we call we say, an academic part and um, a clinical part with a pre-registration clinical placement um, component that we call internship. Mrs. Harker will tell you about the clinical and the pre-registration um, um, part, okay? And I will do in the academic part, okay? Brace yourself for that now. The academic part basically is composed of three academic years, nine semesters, all right? And we have three semesters per academic year, and the academic year tends to start in September. All right, so we have semester one in August to December, then semester two, January to May, and we have semester three, June, August, all right? Now, the academic courses, we have, um, we have the radiographic specific courses that we call the DEMA courses. Then you have some mandatory UWI, these are foundation courses are and elective courses that you may have to do or will have to do. And there's a research component, right? Now, in first year, you will be doing the following courses. And if you look at the, um, the chart, you will see where the, um, the asterisk will tell you if it's, um, if it's one semester or two semester or three semester, okay? We will be doing anatomy and physiology. And that is, um, that's, 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 that's looking at the, the human body, just like, just like biology. Then we have general and radiation physics. Then there is radiation protection and biology and asymmetry. We have patient management, principles of radiographic exposure. Right? And still in first year, you'll see that we have a lot of courses to do. We have the practicum simulation. Um, Ms. Harker will tell you some more about that. Then we have radiographic positioning and procedures followed by introduction to medical imaging. Mathematics is a UWI course, and this is done either in semester one or semester two. And we have introduction to computers in education, UWI. Still on the first year course, it is a very long thing. We have psychology, yes, you have to do psychology. And that's in the second year. Then we have statistics, which is also a UWI course. And it's done either in the first or second semester followed by clinical education. And this is what critical reading and writing, all right? And there are seminar, seminars and the clinical practicum. In year two, you'll be doing again anatomy and physiology. It's actually a two year course. And then you have clinical education and image analysis, followed by health education, general physics, epidemiology, and community health. All right, and you can see there where these are done two semester or one semester. All right, still in second year, we have patient management to do, radiographic positioning and procedure, followed by research methodology and radiographic imaging and quality management. Pharmacology is also done, and we have radiographic equipment and maintenance, patient management. This part is a practical component still seminars again to do and ward rotation. For ward rotation, you'll be sent on the ward at um, the university hospital to to um, to see what this this the, the idea of this is to actually have you 
see what other members of the and the healthcare team does you know see what the nurses does what how the patient are on the ward what the doctors do on the ward etc and to to actually form a part of the team all right then we have um, seminars again clinical and practicum um, and that involve the examination also in third year we have clinical practicum and uh, the examination also we have community, a community project to do project rather and this is then followed by healthcare management pathology and phlebotomy all right in third year still we're gonna do radiographic equipment and maintenance radiographic pos positioning and procedures radiographic imaging and quality management pathology and diagnosis and in third year you have specialized imaging modalities and radiation therapy then they have the Viva Vose examination. It's an oral examination. For the Viva Vose, you actually um, do an oral examination for about 15 minutes with two examiners, and you can be examined from um, any course, any activities, clinical participation from first year up to the point um, of the Viva examination. Then you have the elective to do. Your elective is a clinical component, and Mrs. Harker will, um, will expound on that in her part. There are some mandatory UWI courses that are Caribbean Civilization, Beginners Caribbean Sign Language, or you can do Caribbean Civilization. You can do Law and Governance and Economy and Society. Right? Assessment here at SMRT involves um, coursework, which is a project, quizzes, etc. And we have a final examination. The, the waiting of the coursework and the final examination to give you a pass mark is actually dynamic now. It's flexible because of COVID. Before COVID, it used to be practically 70% examination and 30% coursework. Now it is like 50% coursework or 50% examination or 2080. Uh, it depends on the lecturer and what, what, what is what. The pass mark is 50%. All right, let's look at the course and the credit and GPA. All right, the foundation courses are pass fail. Okay. Well, um, to get the GPA, you need a minimum score of one, to get a GPA of one rather. Um, so that's 30% pass mark and 80% um, pass mark and above will give you a GPA of 4.3, all right? Now, this GPA system will determine your award, all right? So these are the different kinds of awards that you can look forward to. You have the Dean's List Award, and the requirements to be on the Dean's List is a GPA of 3.6 or, or greater. You should have no failing grade whatsoever. So if you fail a, a course and you take it over and pass the course, and you have a GPA of four, you will still not qualify to, to be on the Dean's List because you fail a course. Right? You should have no disciplinary action um, pending or otherwise. Right? For this um, award, you are recognized at the, the FMS, Faculty uh, of Medical Sciences Annual Award Ceremony. They are we call the FMS Honor Society. And the requirement for this is um, you come first and the second place in each year group. All right? And then you'll be um, awarded here. Right. You're also recognized at the FMS award ceremony. Right. Your degree, which is also awarded, your first class, upper second class, lower second class, and a pass. Right. And on the, the chart you will see there with a GPA of 3.6 and greater, you have um, you're sure to get a first class on a, and three. Um, to 3.59 upper second class and 2.5 to 2.99 lower second class and 2 to 2.49 is a past degree. Okay. Um, well, here we go. Any question? Question anybody? Well, I guess I did very good. So there's no question here for me. So I will just hand you over to the, um, to, to the moderator, Mrs. Rose. 
Thank you guys for listening. Okay, Mr. McKenzie, thank you. Thank you for, for sharing with us. Okay, Mr. Roth, thanks very much. Good. Come. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I hope Bruce looks official. <laughs> Mute your please. phone, Mr. McKenzie. Mute your microphone, please. Right. He is his next presenter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our next presenter is Lazana Bruce. I hope I'm getting the, the, the title correct. Um, Lazano is the president of the Association of Student Radiographers. Am I correct? Yes, that's correct, Mrs. That's correct. All right, good. And Lazano is a very active, a very active president. And um, I see where he has taken some steps this year to really, um, um, to really invite the new students into the program, guiding them through the process. It's a, it's a process of, it's, it's, it's a different process for this year. But he has been proactive alongside his, 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 his um, student body to actually um, ensure that you are informed about all the processes of the program. And so I now invite Mr. Bruce to make a presentation on behalf of the Association of Student Radiographers. Welcome, Bruce. All right, thank you, Mrs. Rose. Um, good morning, everyone. Hope you're all well and keeping safe. So my name is Lassana Bruce, president of the Association of Student Radiographers. You seem to have having some difficulty with the connection. Are you guys hearing me? I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Yes. I'm hearing you, Bruce. So I'll, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be sharing my screen, Mrs. Rose. Go right ahead. Is everybody seeing? No, we're not we're seeing it. We're still seeing you, yes. Still not seeing? Still not seeing. Still not, still not mm -hmm. seeing it, Ambrose. All right, so I'm trying to share up a PowerPoint presentation. So I'm not sure if you would have to make me an, a host. To, to mm -hmm. the um, you, you should be able to, to share because I understand from the IT, from the MITS personnel, that anyone can, can share a presentation. She's not getting to share, yes. Yes. Let's get the IT person's face, Bruce. Yes. They're right here. They're here. Mrs. Rose, I left you now. Uh, Bruce. Yes, sir. Bruce. Um, the, 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 is a PowerPoint you have to share? Yes, yes, a PowerPoint. Is it, is it open on the laptop? Is it open? Yes, it is. All right, open it. And if you look on your screen at the bottom, you will see a thing marked share screen, right? It's like a green button with an arrow, an up arrow. You see it? Mm -hmm. 
It says share screen. Yes, I'm seeing, I'm seeing. All right, click, click on that. And then open the presentation. Just, ah, there right. you go, my son. Bingo. That's you, yeah. yeah. That's right, you, my wife, all right? And all then right. you can go into slides too, all right? Okay, he's there. Okay, 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 very good, sir. All right, so I just want to say, um, give a special welcome to uh, our future radiographers, to the SMRT family, and by extension, the Pelican family. I know you guys have worked really hard to be here, um, and I have no doubt that you will do well in the program. You know, we're a small program with very excellent radiographers, persons who are dedicated to service. So by the time you are supposed to graduate, I have no doubt that you will become competent radiographers. So we know what SMRT is, which is a school of medical radiation technology, but most persons will not know what is ASR. So I will give you a brief rundown of what it is. So ASR stands for the Association of Student Radiographers. And our objectives, some of our objecti objectives include to act as the formal representation for radiography students within and concerning the university and to provide support by creating an environment that encourages security and unison. So throughout the course of the year, you guys as first year will have certain issues that you want to be addressed, certain concerns. So we will basically act as that bridge between you guys and the members of staff. So whatever issues or concerns you may have, you can relay, relay them, them to us and we'll try to get them sorted. So we also seek to integrate radiography students into the university community. So during the course of the year as well, you will see that we'll have uh, a number of activities that um, will require you to participate. Uh, for this academic year, we have partnered with uh, um, a few different programs as well on certain initiatives. So as time goes by, you'll get further information on that. Also, we seek to promote the School of Medical Radiation Technology and radiography itself. In high school, you guys find that a lot of persons really don't know what is radiography. And you have persons who are of the misconception that it's actually doctors who perform x-rays and CTs and so forth. So they don't know who radiographers are. So we see to promote radiography and the School of Medical Radiation Technology. So throughout the course of the year as well, you'll find that we'll have school visits. Um, given the COVID climate, that won't be possible. However, we are seeking other mediums by which we can get radiography across to others. So we'll be using the, the virtual space. So an overview of some of the major activities or, and events that we'll be having this academic year. And as you see, point to note, the activities are subject to change and are planned with the threat of the COVID-19 virus in mind. So for semester one, as I see, we are getting through the orient orientation period. Um, what we have planned for you is a, a sibling slash mentorship program We'll be having the first year welcoming social, which will take place in September. We have radiography week. We have the wellness seminar, which would be a, a new initiative. Also, we have the end of semester social. We have the give it drive, the bake sale, and another new initiative that we're seeking to have, which is the ASR awards. So as Mr. McKenzie would have shared with you a while ago, students who have obtained a GPA of 3.6 and above, they normally make it to the Dean's list. Persons who come first and second are normally given awards as well. So what I want to introduce is the ASR awards and we'll be going by a class to class basis for the first, um, the first time. So with the ASR awards, you, have, you know you have persons who would have done well but not, not necessarily well enough to have made it onto the Dean's list. So the ASR awards will basically highlight those persons, persons who have obtained a GPA of 3.0 and above. 
not only will it highlight persons who have obtained um, academic excellence, but persons in the program who have excelled in different areas. So from experience, SMRT have always had a lot of talent in sports, in outreach. You have persons who are really good singers in, in the creative arts. So this new initiative will basically highlight those persons and not only the students, but even members of the academic staff. So for semester two, one of the most um, anticipated events is actually the pinning and induction ceremony, which is actually for you guys as first year. Um, we normally have ASR school visits. We have the Waki Sports Day. We have the Give It Initiative Drive. We have the end of semester social. We have the Med Size Sports Day, and we'll be having another wellness seminar. Now, just to go in detail of a few of these events. So for the sibling and mentoring program, we know that making the transition from high school to, to university can be very challenging. So as an association, we are basically trying to bridge that gap. So with the sibling, the sibling program, the sibling initiative, the first years will basically be peered with students of different year groups, higher year groups who would have been in the program and have experience through, through different, um, so would have had experience in the program itself. So they would basically be there to offer academic assistance to the students and basically act as a, a form of support. Now, separate from the sibling program is the mentorship program. Now with the mentorship program, this program would basically is, as a, is a program that you would have to apply for. So the, with the sibling initiative, siblings are automatic. So once you're a student of SMRT, you will be given a, a sibling who will offer academic assistance. However, the mentorship program, you will have to be mentee and yours will be from higher year groups as well and persons off from the staff who are willing to offer support. Now, for Radiography Week, Radiography Week, which normally takes place in, in November, it will run from November 1 to 6. Now, unlike any other year where we're, we're mostly face to face, you know, we'll, have, we'll, be on a, we'll be using a virtual space for most of our activities because we just want, you know, we have to keep safe with the whole COVID threat. We don't want to put ourselves at risk. So for Radiography Week, we had a, have some new initiatives planned. So for Sunday, which it would be November 1, we'll be having a day of prayer and praise, which will um, comprise students from the program um, who are a part of different chorales. You have un university chorale and others who will be coming in to share with us um, for a few hours through prayer and praise. For the Monday, which is November 2, we'll be having a patient care seminar which will be done on a virtual space. So we'll be having persons coming in to share with you guys as well. The Tuesday, we'll be having an Instagram competition. So with the Instagram competition, you guys can follow the Instagram page, which is at UE Mona, at UE underscore SMRT and the prize and there will be giveaways. For the Wednesday, which is November 4, we'll be having a improving professionalism forum so we'll have outsiders coming in as well to share with you guys. For the Thursday, we'll be having a sonography presentation, you know, sonography, ultrasound. A lot of persons after finishing um, diagnostic imaging will be interested in going, moving forward to higher level education. So sonography is one of those options as Mr. McKenzie was sharing with the guys earlier. So we'll be having a sonography presentation to give you guys a highlight of what sonography really is. And on the Friday, which is November 6th, we'll be having a game day. Now, 
This Games Day will be on a virtual space. The Games and Activities Coordinator on the association will give further detail on how we'll move forward with the Games Day itself. All right, so for the wellness seminar, you know, it's difficult enough for some of us to be at home for such an extended period. You know, it can really take a toll on your mental health, especially going through this period of COVID. You know, so you can, the wellness seminar would basically um, seek to bring in persons who will share with the guys on how to cope during this period because as a student it it can be really challenging for you to to settle and you know that mind that mind is a, is a powerful thing so we just want to cater for you guys we want you guys to be as settled and relaxed as possible in the learning space so the wellness seminar will take place on october 10 which is a saturday which would be world health day So for the Give It Initiative Drive, the Give It Initiative Drive, you know, in everything that we do, we have to, um, there has to be some form of volunteerism. And this is our, our form of volunteerism on a yearly basis. So on the Give It Initiative Drive, at specific points during the academic year, we have persons who will contribute tin products, clothing to charity. And we'll basically coll collect those items. We'll basically make care packages. And these care packages are normally distributed to adult homes, children homes, and other organi organizations that support the needy. Now, unlike previous years, where we normally have a lot of volunteers, you know, given the COVID period, that won't be possible this year but you guys can basically assist in collecting the items and um, we'll move forward with the process of distributing to the different um, organizations. So this is one such event that you can look forward to. So as was mentioned earlier, the pinning and induction ceremony, which is one of the most anticipated for the pinning and induction ceremonies where you will get your, your pin with um, your basically your name tag. And um, also you will be inducted into the Association of Student Radiographers. Now, in order to be inducted as a member, you will have to um, attend the meetings. You will have, have to attend three consecutive meetings and pay some form of dues to be considered a member. No, we're not sure how we'll move forward, forward with the dues process. Um, we actually have an account which can be, um, funds can be transferred online. So we'll see how best we can maneuver through that. But the pinning and induction ceremony will take place on February 4, which will be in second semester. School visits, as we say, to promote radiography and the School of Medical Radiation Technology. Um, we are not sure when we'll actually um, do the school visits. Well, we are considering a virtual space for the school visits. So we'll basically dialogue with the, the, the different schools and see how best we can um, work around a, a Zoom session with the students because we still despite the, the whole COVID period, we still want to reach out to the different schools, we want to get them as informed as possible about radiography and SMRT. So the Wacky Sports Day, um, which was one of the, the, the big events for us last year as well, you know, we use this um, event basically to prove the level of integration between the different year groups. Last year we had games such as Uno, we had dominoes, we had chess, we even had a FIFA competition, we had bun, and, bun eating contests, we had soda drinking contests. You know, we had a lot of fun, but um, things will have to be different this year. So most, more than likely, we'll be using a virtual space as well for the games. Um, so further details will be given on that when I dialogue with the games and activities coordinator. But this is one such event that most persons look forward to throughout the course of the year. 
So some ASR highlights for you guys. Um, here we see our current secretary, Daniel Samuda, being pinned at the pinning and induction ceremony by our faculty dean, who is Dr. Tomlin Paul. Here we have some members of the team from last year. We have the, the president who was Shanice. You had the med medical science representative who was Kevoy Taylor and other members of the association and um, students alike. Here we had um, Christina Williams, who was the former Guild Council President for the university. This was actually at the Club Fusion last year. Um, so radiography represented well. Um, due to the COVID period as well, we won't be having any Club Fusion this year. But this is one event that we normally represent and represent well in. Here you can see it's not just about academics. We actually have a football team, we have a netball team. For two consecutive years, SMRT has won the football competition. Last year, the, the, the females placed um, third in the, the netball competition. For the volleyball competition, we actually placed second. We were beaten in the finals. Throughout the course of the year, we normally have a few fundraisers as well. So this was actually a, a pre-Valentine's Day sale. And here we see our former president, um, Emony Clayton, and a few others representing. So during the course of the year, we'll be having talk drives as well. Um, a new initiative that we had introduced is actually the production of, of masks. So we actually have, we're in the process of getting in ASR masks to be ordered and distributed. So persons who are interested in obtaining masks, you can submit your names, your size, and we'll take the process from there. In addition to that, the School of Medical Radiation Technology actually has personalized shirts as well. Shirts that can be worn um, to classes, especially on Fridays, you know, students who are interested can let me know and we'll see how best we can get them for you. So to end, I just want to say all the best to the students. You know, we're in unprecedented times and as a, as a student body, we'll have to be dynamic in how we approach things and uh, especially as, um, as, as a staff. And as the, the ASR motto says, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much more. So I just want to tell you guys to condition your minds to do well. Um, ASR, SMRT is, is not a walkover, but you have lecturers who will be there with you every step of the way and other members of staff who will be there with you as well. So I wish you all the best and uh, You'll hear from me more throughout the course of the year. So thank you for tuning into my presentation. Thank you, Lazano. Very well said, very well done. Um, are you taking any questions at this point? You're taking questions? I could allow two, about two questions, just about two questions because we're running late. Any questions? Just about two questions, two quick questions. Um, morning. Good morning. I was wondering how we could get in contact with him again. All right, so our freshers group was created. Um, I've, been, I've been in dialogue with um, a lot of the freshers. So after we're, we're finished with the orientation process, we can get in touch and uh, add you to the freshers group. So you can see what is being prepared. Okay. Any other question? Any other question? All right. Well done. We, um, Yes, well done. As you can see, the 
um, Association of Student Radiographers has quite a lineup of activities for you. There's no place to bore down, yes? So <laughs> the, 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 the ASR will serve as a psychological, social, academic, spiritual, physical, and of, of course, societal responsibility platform for you to get engaged and integrated into the university community. So I, impl I implore you to ensure that you get on board as soon as you can. And I know Bruce and his team will do all they can to ensure that you're comfortable, well integrated, and settled into university life. Thank you. Our next presenter is Mrs. Faith Harker. She's our clinical coordinator, and she will walk you through the clinical program. Mrs. Harker. Thank you, Mrs. Rose. And I want to thank um, Lasano for the wonderful presentation that he did. Lasano is a dark horse. He never really made us know that he was so accomplished. All right. Good morning, 2023. Waters run deep. <laughs> <laughs> I will be addressing you as 2023. You are the graduating class of 2023. And all my emails to you are going to be addressed to 2023. I am the present clinical coordinator for your course. I'm the one who sends you into dark waters. I'm the one who organizes your clinical um, rotations. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it but I'm gonna use a presentation and we can take questions. Oh my, 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 my. What is going on? I think I lost contact. Did I lose contact with you? I'm, I'm hearing you. Okay, thanks. I'm thanks. hearing you. I, Temporarily yeah. lost contact. Okay. Okay. I'm going to share screen. And make sure the presentation is open on your laptop first, Mrs. Alton. It's open. Ah, great. There you go. It's open. I've seen something now. Just need to and open it up a little bit more. Going to slideshow. Going to slideshow. Okay. There you go. Excellent, excellent. All right. Okay, so your clinical practicum. You all seeing everything? Facing it clearly? Yes, yes. Yes, right. yes we are. Yes. Your clinical practicum. The purpose of your clinical practicum is for observation and practice of imaging principles, because you're gonna learn these principles in your classroom setting in the first year of your program. And then we are hoping that COVID-19 will allow us to send you to your clinics in your third semester. You will do your first, you will do your first clinical as six weeks in your third semester. It is also to expose you to a wide variety of imaging modalities, certainly the ones that we have available in Jamaica, and we have most of them available in Jamaica. You'll be sent to public sector and private sector clinics, high volume and low volume clinics. You'll be exposed to different and varying clinic cultures and di different and varying demographics within Jamaica. Your present clinical coordinator is me, Faith Harker. I'm a past student of SMRT, well, before it was called SMRT. There is a clinical instructor who is based in Montego Bay. Her name is Vinette Richards Hall. If other clinical coordinators are brought into the picture at any time, you will usually be informed. All right, so we're talking about clinic sites where you go now. Most of your clinic sites are located in Kingston and St. Andrew metropolitan area. And we include in that Fort Moore and Spanish Town for convenience. Then you have clinics that are located outside of Kingston. And these are clinics that we use regularly for your rotations. 
And then we have clinics that are located both in and out of Kingston, which are optional clinics. These clinics are used in different circumstances, sometimes for convenience, sometimes for regular rotations. There's a list of clinic sites, which I'm not going to go into right now, but I have made a list of clinic sites. And these are, these are it, it's a very elastic list because different clinic sites at times will ask to be taken off for one reason or another. But basically they are on there most of the time. All right, your clinical practicum schedule. In year one, you are scheduled to six weeks in semester three. That's at the end of year one. At the end of year two, you are scheduled in semester three to eight weeks. However, right after you finish your clinic in semester three in year two, you're going to a clinic in semester one in year three. This can be a little bit um, disturbing for some of our students particularly those who don't apply themselves to clinic because it seems to be onerous. But you know something? This is what you're going to be doing for the rest of your career. And it is only, it is only beneficial for you if you are going to put your all into your clinic. There is, of course, a short hiatus between your second year clinic and your third clinic. So you are usually, I usually advise student radiographers to rest as much as possible in that time. Because during that time, you're really not doing any classroom work. So there's very little that you have to keep up with if you have been pacing yourself. During your entire clinic period, you are asked to do a total of just under 12 100 assigned hours. This sounds a lot, but it is not really a lot because it is broken up into increments. And it is left to you to manage, go to clinic regularly and manage your hours. At present, we are asking students to do 300 student managed hours. And these are hours that you manage yourself. They're not assigned to you by your clinical department, but they are assigned to you to be completed. You are the one who decides when you do those hours, how you do those hours, and all of that is done in conjunction with the clinical department and the clinical radiographers in the clinics. You are also required to do a minimum of 1,200 procedures. That is X-ray, ultrasound, CT, MR procedures. And these have to be recorded because these go on your record and they are entered into your transcript. There are certain examinations, basic examinations, that we want to attest to your competence in. And those are listed on, on a sheet, an assessment sheet, which you take the clinic with you. you do your competences supervised by the radiographers in the clinic. They attest to your competence, they rate you, and these also go on your record. It's an international thing with training radiographers, and so it goes on your transcript, and you know the purposes of transcripts. Transcripts are to matriculate you into programs, get you jobs, whatever. So everybody who you approach any kind of advancement after your program is done will want to see some form of a transcript. All right, the aim of your clinics is to assign students to as many different clinics as possible. We want you to experience the differences in clinic cultures, in demographics, in living in different parts of Jamaica and Kingston. You're assigned for between one and three weeks on each occasion. And you may be paired with another student. You may find yourself with three other students, maybe five other students, or you may be by yourself. 
student manage hours at Christmas. Now, this is something which we started not too long ago because we found that it was a little bit difficult for students to transition from classroom straight into clinic and function. And we also found that familiarization with a clinic setting helped students to envisage and um, visualize what they would be actually going into when they're being taught in the classroom. So we, we, um, we decided that we would find out if students wanted to spend a week in a clinic which was close to their home and get to know exactly, well, not exactly, but get an idea of what radiographers actually do. And it also helped them to make up their minds as to whether they really wanted to do radiography or they just were there because it sounded good. Um, so it's for familiarization with a clinic environment. Um, and it's an opportunity for the students to start working on their student managed hours. Students may choose to spend a week in a clinic that is approved and the clinic must be convenient to, the where, to where you live because at this point, no accommodation is being arranged for you. The, the arrangements for a student managed hours at clinic are made by the clinic staff, the clinical staff. Now, I, I'm not sure, this is a very flexible thing now, very dynamic, because all of this is based on whether you will be able to accommodate it um, within the COVID-19 protocols. Transportation to clinics, and uh, this is also a very dynamic process right now, because the faculty is in the midst of rearranging their transportation arrangements. But usually in Kingston, transportation is offered for students from the FMS campus only. Bustamante Hospital, Kingston Public Hospital, and Spanish Town Hospital on a daily basis. There were two buses, one leaves at 6.30, one leaves at 7.30. There is also transportation to um, Bustamante and KPH at 7.30, um, but none to Spanish Town at 7.30. And their, um, the return trip leaves Spanish Town at 3.30, and it stops at KPH and Bustamante to pick up students. Now, whenever students are short of hours because the trip leaves a particular site early, they are expected to make up those hours at another clinic site. Maypen has its own dedicated transportation and it leaves the faculty building at 6.30 every morning, Monday to Friday. The return trip from Maypen leaves at four o'clock. Out of town transportation. The faculty arranges transportation to Mandeville Mandeville, St. Anne's Bay, and um, Montego Bay. Currently, Cornwall Regional Hospital is not recognized as a regular site because, you know, Cornwall Regional, if you've been listening to the news, you know that Cornwall Regional is experiencing its own challenges right now. And the interim radiology department is too small to accommodate students. From time to time, they will, they would take at one student at a time. But with COVID-19 protocols currently in force, they are not able to take any students at this time. So the students are assigned to Falmouth Hospital and wherever they are accommodated in Montego Bay or Falmouth, they're transported to the hospital each day and transported back to the residence. The same thing applies for St. Anne's Bay. They are accommodated in St. Anne's Bay, currently at a place called Columbus Inn in Prairie, and they're transported to and from the hospital. In Mandeville, our current accommodation is at Gulf View Hotel, and there is no need for transportation because Gulf View, you can practically cough and spread it all over the hospital from Gulf View. They're right across the road. Um, students are currently um, uh, accommodated at the expense of the faculty and their transportation is also at the expense of the faculty. 
I don't know how elastic that is going to be in the future, but that is what it is right now. Accommodation. The information that we, I normally have for accommodation has been deferred because owing to COVID-19, we suspended contractual arrangements with most of our providers of accommodation. So I don't have anything to tell you about accommodation right now. What am I gonna need for clinic? Um, you're gonna need BLS CPR certification. We normally procure that through the Heart Foundation of Jamaica. I don't know what the arrangements for that are going to be based on COVID-19 protocols, but we will see. We have a whole year for that to happen. You need to have had your hepatitis B inoculations. And I will not send you to clinic unless I see evidence of hepatitis B inoculations. You also need to have evidence of inoculation for varicella. That is what gives you um, chicken pox. Um, and this all comes about because of a need for your safety as well as the safety of the general public. Because in all things clinical, we have to think about our personal safety and the safety of the general public. You will need to be registered for your personal radiation monitor. And I will be in contact with you and supply you with your registration forms so that you can be registered with the provider of this monitoring service. You will need to activate your UE email. And I'm very, very, I'm very, very persistent about this because this is the way the UE Mona communicates with its students, not the way I communicate with you, but the way UE Mona communicates with its students. And when you need to get information about your clinical activities from the faculty, particularly with where you stay and how you travel, you will need to get it on your UE email platform. If you are not connected, you will not get it. If you do not get it, you will not have your information available to you and you will miss your clinic. If you miss your clinic, there is absolutely no way you can make up for it by doing an extra year. To get to clinic, you will be given clinical documents which are supplied by the department. And these are to record your cases, your hours, and your evaluations. You will need a notebook. Trust me, you will need a little notebook to record all the little things that you note in clinic that are not in your, in your um, lectures. You will need your TLD, and you will also need a pair of anatomic markers, which is a left and a right, two letters, which you will use to mark your films at all times. These are small items, but they're expensive. The current cost, and only because I bought them last year, is $1,800. They have to be procured from the United States, and once the dollar moves, the cost moves. And that is one of the reasons why I bought two sets last year, so that you guys, uh, Mr. McKenzie is showing you what his look like, so that you guys would not have an increased cost this year. They're available from me, right? And we will talk about this a little bit later. When I send you emails, I will keep sending you um, update emails. The supplies that you're gonna need for clinic. You need to have your personal articles. So if you're going to go out to clinics outside of Kingston, which you will, unless there is some predisposing condition that allows you not to go out there, you will be, you will be um, rotated through an out of town site at least once for each of your year one or year two rotations. You need your toilet articles. You need linen and towels for the period that you're going to be out there. So if you're one of those persons who feel that you need to change your sheets every day, then you're going to have to take the required number of sheets so that either you wash or you take a whole pile of sheets and bring them back home and wash them. 
you will need to take your own food. The only thing that is provided is your lodging, a bed, a room, a bed in a room. And you will have to take your own food and cook it in the kitchen that is provided. You will, SMRT currently, at, as a gift from the Society of Radiographers Jamaica, SMI, SMRT has kitchenware and tableware, but you have to take your own cutlery. We did not provide cutlery because cutlery is something that gets lost very easily and or having to keep repeatedly replacing them is going to be onerous and costly. So you're required to take your own knife and fork and spoon, but you will get your cup, your plate, and your bowl, and you will get your pots and pans and the things to cook with your cookware. Columbus Inn is the only um, place that students are accommodated where kitchenware and tableware are supplied. But you will, you will hear about this later on because all of what I'm telling you now, um, all of what I'm telling you now is going to go through one ear and come out the other because clinic is so far away that you're going to forget half of what I've told you. Um, however, at some point during your one year stretch until you go to clinic, I will refresh your memories as to what you need for clinic and what clinic is all about. And I will also, you will also have my email address and my telephone number, and you may contact me at any time, as I indicate, um, if you have queries. If there are any pressing, pressing queries, you may ask me in a little while, but I would, I wouldn't implore that you ask me anything now because whatever you I answer now, you're not likely to remember unless you're, you're one of those people that write down everything. What I do want to say to you is that COVID-19 protocols for the different clinics are different. Although the clinics do observe the national protocols, they do have additional protocols that they, they like to impress you with. Um, Mr. McKenzie asked me to speak to you about your elective. Our elective is usually done as the last clinic before you graduate, before you leave and graduate. And it is 160 hours that used to be able to be done um, uh, in a foreign country or locally. And um, we usually asked that students indicate where they wanted to do their elective very early so that arrangements could be made by the department. SMRT has to make the arrangements and the liaison for you. However, we doubt that the elective will be done in any foreign country for this particular year. And I don't know when we'll be able to extend the elective participation to foreign countries. So our elective is now in a dynamic process. And by the time the time comes for you to do it, I'm sure that we will have revised it and we will know exactly what the elective contains. The last piece of advice that I need to give you is that because clinic takes place in the third semester primarily, you are asked to do as many of your foundation clinics, your foundation um, courses within the first year or by extension within the first semester of the second year. Because by the time you get to do your final clinic in the third year, we don't want for you to have to be doing foundation clinics so that your experience in clinic will be abbreviated. We want for you to be focusing on clinic because radiography, with all the knowledge that they're going to impart to you in your lectures, radiography still remains a practical, practical profession. If you can't practice, you can't do radiography with whatever knowledge you have. If you can't put it down on the tabletop 
with your fingertips, then you are not a radiographer. Um, I think that is where I am going to stop right now. As I said, I will be in contact with all of you. I'm going to form a group so that I can contact you at the click of a switch. I am going to have your telephone numbers so that I can contact you by phone as needed. You will have my contacts and um, we'll move on from there. If there is a pressing question, I'll take it. I'll take up to two, but I advise you to hold your questions until later and we can do a one-on-one -on -one or we can, I can speak with you all as a class. Good morning. Um, yes, you, said that, you said that the varicella vaccine prevents against chicken pox. What if we already had chicken pox before in the past? Do we still need to get that? Um, you need to get a letter from your family doctor saying that you had chicken pox or from your public health clinic if you have a um sorry one second the wi-fi checked out a while ago can you repeat what you said you will need to get a letter from your family doctor saying that you had chicken pox okay thank that you. is the best thing to do mm -hmm. and then you submit it along with your um your clinic your uh, inoculation records. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I take it that everybody has taken my advice about holding out. Mrs. Rose, over to you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Tanaka, for for that very comprehensive overview of the clinic. I can tell them that um, most students find the clinics to be the best part of the program. They <laughs> and that's the truth. They all enjoy um, the clinical setting. And um, we hope that they will integrate well into that aspect of the program. Our next presenter is Miss Janet McIntosh. She will speak to you on student affairs. Ms. McIntosh, over to you. Good morning to you all and welcome to the University of the West Indies, the most highly recognized university in the Caribbean region. We're very happy to have you joining the health professions and the radiography in particular. Radiography is that profession that is referred to as the eye of medicine. As radiographers, we produce quality images so that doctors can make important decisions about patient management and patient care generally. Your career choice, therefore, is unique and very, very important. It is really a great honor and privilege, privilege for me to help you to grow along your chosen career path. As faculty advisor for your club, the Association of Student Radiographers. I do not only play the role of facilitator for the club, club's activities and the needs of the members of the executive of the club. I'm also very, very interested in your individual needs. Those individual needs are very, very important to me. I believe that when your individual needs are identified and addressed, you have the ability to develop to your full potential. As you journey through the radiography program, there will be twists and turns along the way. There will be obstacles to overcome. 
There may also be moments when you feel overwhelmed and overworked. But those of us who have already been, been through the program are willing to help you. Faculty will provide you with their contact information for you to contact us with issues that you face. The ASR will also provide you with support. And you've seen uh, Lassan outline some of the activities that will help to distract you and that will help to support you. And there will also be peer mentorship programs where you will build relationships with persons within the profession and who are already in the program. And in closing, once again, welcome to the family of medical imaging professionals. I wish for you an interesting but exciting journey. I look forward to working with you as you embark on your journey to become radiographers. I also hope to celebrate with you when you graduate in the next three years. Thank right. you. Not that I'm supposed to be here. Yeah. All right, thank you, Ms. McIntosh. Yes, yes, thank you, Ms. McIntosh. Are there any questions for Ms. McIntosh? As you can see that we not, we, we, we not only, we not only dwell on the academics, but we also take care of students' individual needs. So Ms. McIntosh is our point person on student affairs, counseling, etc., faculty advisor. And so we ask that you take advantage of the opportunities available to you to really um, speak with her, um, consult on those issues, which of course, sometimes they're in, although they're individual issues, they sometimes affect your academic work and your academic performance. And we want to ensure that you are taken care of in terms of your holistic care. And so thanks again, Ms. McIntosh. And if there are any questions, you could direct them to her at this point. Sorry. He, Mr. Walker is the next person up, but he had asked to be, to, be, um, to be pushed back a bit because of some urgent, urgent um, issue that he had to deal with. So if Mr. Walker is not in, we're going to ask Mrs. Thompson to speak now about the library and its resources. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Good morning, everyone. All right. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, good too. Okay. Everybody good so far, yeah. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I am your school. <laughs> yeah, Bruce, I'm Bruce your school name. Yes, even though it's just that in um hold on. Hold on, let me unmute my mic. It's just that I'm busy. But in good morning, good. Very good. Macintosh, mute your mic. <laughs> mute Macintosh. Okay, let us go again. Good morning, everyone. I am yours truly, Millet Thompson, your the school librarian. I am here to share with you everything you need to know about the library, such as the opening hours. The library opening hours is between the hours of 8 30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The library consists of several books, such as your core course books. And for example, we have um, like patient care in diagnostic radiography. 
we have radiographic positioning, radiographic equipment, radiographic um, radiological science for technologies, radiographic imaging, radiation protection, quality assurance, radi radiographic techniques, and radiographic exposure. Those are just for example, those are just some of your um, core course um, books that we offer in the SMRT library. There are also um, a borrowing duration. You may be wondering for how long you can borrow a book. Well, we have long term, long term such as 14 days. We also have short term, such as three to five days. And why there, you, why there are three to five days? Because we may not have the volume, for example, the amount of books to, to lend each person for 14 days. So as an example, we lend you for maybe three to five days, depending on the amount of books, that type of book that we have to offer. And I'll give you for an example, like our medical law and ethics. There are just a few numbers. So as a result, those are, we lend those just for three to five days. All right, the, we also have other specialized book, such as the ultra, such as ultrasound, CT, and um, CT, which is computerized tom tomography, is shortening in CT, or the abbreviation. There are also other books, such as um, the physics, psychology, microbiology, and pharmacology that you'll be using in year one. So this library of all those books available. There are also penalties applied to borrowing these books. These penalties will also discuss with you as we in, in um, it will discuss with you further. So this is it really. And also in the library we have the computers that consist of the um the the apps for the shade aware which you will be able to use to help you with your um techniques and so forth. The location of the library is situated on the B block of the MF, FMS building. So this is, this, is, this, is, this is what I have to say so far. If there's any question, you can ask. If not, thanks for listening. Are there any questions from Mrs. Thompson regarding the library and its resources? In addition to our library, we also you also have access to, to the main library on the campus, as also to the medical library. So between those three locations, you have a wealth of resources to use in your studies, but our library is more specific. Our SMRT library is more specific to those core topics and supporting subjects that you will need to complete for your program. So make use of the facility as best you can. No questions? If there are no questions, then um, is Mr. Walker in as yet? Is Mr. Walker in? Is Mr. Walker in? Not yet. Not yet. All right, he said by about 11. We're still, we're still five minutes on the, um, on the left side of 11. So we're going to proceed with the registration. Mrs. Mikulski and Ms. Reed will now present to you information regarding registration. Mrs. Mikulski, Ms. Reed. Good morning, everyone. Are you hearing me? Yes, we are. Okay. Yes, I am hearing you. All right. Um, 
just to share some information as it relates to student registration. Um, to go about doing the student registration, you will have to go on to the website, the UE website, and uh, put in www.mona.uwi.edu. Okay, I'll continue. But before I continue, um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Ashmara Makolsky, and my co worker, Carissa Reed. Just a minute, Mrs. Makolsky. Just a minute, Mrs. Makolsky. Just a minute. Hello, we are having some extraneous conversations during the presentation. We're having some extraneous conversations. Could you please mute your mics during the presentation? Thank you. Go ahead, Mrs. Makowski. Go ahead. All right. I will repeat. Um, my name is Ashmar Makowski and uh, Ms. Carissa Reed. We are the secretaries in the office. All right. As I was saying before, um, I'm going through the registration process. This information is also sent to your individual emails this morning. Also, there is a student registration form that is sent to the new email that was set up, and we are asking you to fill out that form and return it to the school. All right. Um, the website for registration is www.mona.uwi.edu. You'll go on the home page on current students. Then you click to the heading on online systems. Click to the subheading SAS that is student administration system you will click the enter secure area and you put in your username and the password you'll also click continuing you continue to click student services and you'll click registration you'll click look up classes and uh, you select the term semester one 2020-2021. You'll look up your individual classes. So you will go to the subject area. Um, the course field, you have to choose that one, which is under diagnostic imaging. And then you'll see the courses. When you click on it, you'll see the courses appear. For ours, it is a little bit different from the regular university um, selection. So there is for like, for example, anatomy, you will see two boxes there. One represents lectures and one represents tutorial. So you would click the lecture and the tutorial box and it automatically, you click register at, at the end. And this is shown on the registration form. All right. If after registering, um, you choose to drop a course, there is a box that says add a drop. So you choose to click on the add or choose to click on the drop. There are some web registration errors that you might see that comes up while, while registering. Um, example, some registration things that will ask for an override. Like you would see error, when you register, you will see an error. So you would have to click the request override button so that, um, and the, you write in a box um, the comments that you're asking for an override for the course. 
all right? So this, as I said, is sent to you in the email, so you can retrieve it. That is the email, um, SMRT, um, SMRT 2K23 at gmail.com. That is for the year one students. All right, these are just some house, um, house, house matters um, information. All right, as it relates to status letters and unofficial transcript, these can be, these are to be had at the examinations office. So you'll go to the examinations office and request these documents. SMRT does not um, give status letters. Appointments to, to see the director, you need to make an appointment in advance so that you can speak to the director or any other member of staff. The SMRT has an email address. Most of you might know it, but I'm just reinforcing it. Um, it is smrt underscore student 2007 at yahoo.com. Also, the office has a number, a cell number, which is 876-776916. If you are having any other problems with registration, you can call the student administrative office that's on the UWE campus. Um, the number is 876-927-1669. And just ask the operator to put you on to the SAS department. Well, these are the few information that we have from the secretarial staff. Are there any questions? No questions? Okay, morning, Miss Reed here. I just want to add to what Mrs. Makulski had just said. The number that she gave for the department, it also has a what, WhatsApp. So for most students, it might not have the credit to call. So you can WhatsApp call or WhatsApp text any queries in regarding to registration. That's it. Mrs. Rose? Hi, Thank you, Mrs. Yes. Oh, Ms. Clark, you want to say something? Hi, good morning. I was asking if you could repeat the number, please. That's the office number? It's yes, the office number. 876-777-6916. I repeat, 876-777-6916. Okay, thank you. Okay. This is yours. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Smokowski. Thank you so much. Um, uh, students, we, we operate a very, what we call an open door policy. We have an open door policy. Our lectures are available to you for any, um, <coughs> of the bat consultations, yes? Once we are available, we will accommodate you. I have put in your, your semester schedule, time for meeting with the program coordinator and faculty. Outside of those times, you, you can feel free to come in to speak with us once you have some urgent situation to address um, where we need to make appointments. So you need to make appointments where it's not urgent, you can go through the the main office, but we do operate an open door policy and um, all students have access to, to members of staff at all times. Some lecturers will too support in their course outlines, the office hours, those hours which are open for consultation with them and um, others may not definitely state, but I'm sure if you have a situation that needs to be addressed urgently, 
then your lecturer will be more than willing to assist you there. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mr. Mikulski. Um, is Mr. Walker back yet? Mr. Walker? Is Mr. Walker back? All right. Until I hear from him. One other thing I'd like to address with you uh, is professionalism. You have entered what is training for a profession, yes? And sometimes when we think of a profession, we think of um, an award of a qualification for a skill, a competence, etc. But there is a lot more to a profession and that extension we will call it professionalism. Professionalism, of course, extends beyond, we said, beyond the knowledge and the skill. It embodies the kinds of attitudes and behaviors that go along with it. You ever heard someone say, it's not what you said, but how you said it? It's not what you did, but how you did it? And throughout some of our courses in patient care and ethics, et cetera, and medical law, we will try to, as best we can, um, integrate these professional behaviors that we want you to develop over time. Now, within our training program, we have just three years with you here, and that might not be sufficient time in which to, 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 to really um, help you through this process, it's a process, and it's an evolving and ever-changing process. As the situations around you change, we find that we may have to adjust to what those situations are. Just as COVID has more or less, um, has more or less taken over our lives and adjusting and is adjusting our behaviors. So, whatever situation you find yourself in, whether within the classroom, whether in, in, in a grouping, whether in the clinic, these of course require a certain type of behavior. And we're asking that you begin to develop those kinds of attitudes which will, which will really label you as a professional. Yes, it's about honesty, about integrity, it's about, it's about truthfulness, etc. And especially as a healthcare profession, we are required to abide by ethical principles. For patient management, you will, you will be introduced to the, the codes of ethics of our society of radiographers, Jamaican society of radiographers. As best you can see how you can attend some of our, some of our seminars. We have seminars in ethics in radiography, and these would be good for you to, be, to, to begin the exposure um, to, 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 to professional ethics at this point, not when you have left us and you're out in the field. So it is a whole developmental process that we want for you so that in addition to the skill, in addition to the knowledge, you are also behaviorally perfect, not so much perfect, but you're behaviorally correct in how you deal with patients, how you interact with colleagues, how you interact with persons in the clinical setting and other healthcare workers. And so we look forward to this learning process, this teaching learning journey. We are going to be um, looking at it as an exchange of experiences. You all come in with um, some level of knowledge and experience, which we want you at all times to share with us. Do not be afraid to share those experiences with us because what our, what our whole system is about is, is adding to the knowledge that you have come in with. You're not blank slates. You have come in with some level of knowledge about, about life, about your experiences, which we want you to share with us so that we can build on that as you progress into professional life. I thank you for coming. Mr. Walker, are you there yet? Is Mr. Walker in? Okay, it looks like... This is Rose. I, I don't, don't think so. Hmm. All right, okay. I think he All may right. have to do this later with them. Yes, I would think so. Possibly on Monday. Maybe. All right. He was, so, Mrs. Mrs. Rose. Yes. He was to talk about um, Blackboard and OUR. Black and Shareware, yes. yeah.
Mm. Yes, would you want to do that for us? <laughs> it's a, it's a little, it might be a little hard for, not really hard, Mrs. Rose, but um, you know, don't let Which you were not prepared. Be prepared. Um, okay. okay. The, the, the students, they, they, they would have to understand that um, to get on to who you are really, you need your ID number and they your need ID. Yeah. And yes. going to current students and find who you are really. And um, the lecturers generally set up the, um, their classroom with the, um, with, um, in, the, in a container okay. on who you are really. And it, it's, it's sort of labeled as such. So you look for that and then you click into the classroom, um, join it, and do your classes. Um, for Shino Wear, it's a, it's a clinical, um, it's a radiation protection technique software that the students can access. Pretty, pretty easy. It, the learning curve for the Shino Wear might be a little tall, you know, to, 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 to give a snap of it right now. But um, you will learn it as you go along. It's not that hard to, to grasp. Right. Can they access shade? They can access shade away online. They have to come in to access shade. They have to come in to access it. Yes. Uh -huh. You have to come in. Yes. You have to come yes, in. They have to come if they're if they are in, it's a useful application for them to access, and I I encourage them to access it as much as possible if they are in. All right. But for 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 all you are really, you log on with your your ID and your password, and you'll see uh, um you click into the container of the different courses and. The lecturers will put up their um, classroom. Are you going to the classroom, join the classroom, and, and enjoy the classroom and be professional about it? Right? Yes. Yes, and, um, and on OER Daily, on OER, or OER Daily, by the way, is our virtual learning environment. Yes. Yeah, and in, in, some, in some jurisdictions, it's known as Moodle. So you may, some of you may be familiar with Moodle, but for us, it is. Um, it is our proprietary name is OURVLE. And um, this platform offers a number of opportunities for participation, especially through our discussion boards. Um, some lecturers may want to, to, to conduct their tutorials through the discussion boards rather than having you come in face to face. So it's important that you make regular checks on your OURVLE platform to ensure that you're not missing on any um, dated and, and, and any date, any date specific information and assignments because we give you a, a window of time within which to complete certain assignments after which you will not be able to participate and you may lose grades per, per, per se. So um, when Mr. Walker gets the opportunity to come in and to address these, yes, we'll have him do so in more, in better detail rather. Yes, yes, Mr. McKenzie. He's, He's on, on his way. way. You want to give him about All right. two minutes or so? About two sure. minutes? All right. So you can continue talking, Mr. McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what I can do, I can give you, give you um, I will be teaching you guys radiation positioning and uh, procedure, uh, radiation protection and biology. Um, for these two courses, I am, you know, the, um, um, my telephone number is 414-8888. And um, my email address is carlkenzie at msn.com. Um, I generally encourage you guys for my course to form a WhatsApp group for the course um, so that we can communicate, you know, using the WhatsApp group, you know, when, when we have in class, if we're not having class, if I'll be late for class or if you'll be late for class. It's very important that you, um, you, you let the lecturer be aware or know when you might be absent from class. Um, so that you know arrangement can be made for you otherwise because sometimes you might have a little a little session that involves some activities and it's best to let us know that you you might not be there and if we can change things around your schedule we'll try and do so right so i set up a whatsapp group um for my for my two courses right and um we'll do that when we reach our bridge all right um well Ms. Rose, i guess that is that's it you could tell about <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's it for me. For now. Mrs. Rose, I just want them to know that I don't use a WhatsApp group, but I always communicate by email. And I'm hoping that everybody has a smartphone by now. Or if you don't, at least check when you're to be going to clinic or you are in clinic. I implore you to check your email at least 
once a day when you're in clinic, when you're to be going to clinic? Uh, Mrs. Weeks, Rose, is, a month is before here clinic? Now. Is here now. Is here. About a month before clinic, start checking your emails every couple of days because, so you, as I said, things are very elastic and very dynamic now. And we may have to change the procedures by which we do things. So it is very important that you check your messages as often as possible. I don't want you to tell me two weeks down the line that you did not get a notification when I know I sent it out. So I'm asking you that apart from your WhatsApp groups and your OURVLE container, and your Blackboard Collaborate, please check your emails regularly. Thank you, Mr. Tarko. Yes, just sir. one other thing, and just one other thing I want you to. Hello. It's just to add. Just one other, yes, go ahead, Bruce. Um, the password for the email is yes. Dima D I M A all caps two thousand. Yes. All right, good. I, I, I think I received that in the email. Yes, thank you. The one that I was sent in the email was incorrect. It was incorrect. Okay, okay. All right, just to add to students that um, because we intend to do the first two weeks online, I have not put there any, any um, venue for your lectures, for your face-to-face -face sessions. But by the end of next week, once we have finalized the arrangements with the dean's office, then we should be able to provide you some better information on the location or venues for your face-to-face -face sessions. Thank you. I now hand over to Mr. Walker to complete the orientation. He will speak on OUR VLE, the Blackboard Collaborate classroom, as also Shade Aware. Mr. Walker. All right. Good morning, Mrs. Good morning, everyone. Sorry for being late. Um, I was stuck in another meeting, but I ran back over here. In fact, I tried logging out the phone, Mrs. Rose, but the system would not let my phone log on. All right, to the new students, um, welcome. Um, all being well, I will have you, I will teach you a course at least every year throughout your full three years here. And I know you have been told by others before me that um, it's nothing for you to be too concerned about it's just a matter of whether or not you put in the work and you'll get the results. Um, for Orville, Orville is the media interface that the university uses to deliver your lectures, whether by putting them online so you can download them at a later date. It's also how you access the Blackboard Collaborate um, interface through. Now, I must say to you that unless you are registered for the course, you will not be able to access it on Orville. So you must be registered for the course Otherwise, you'll not be able to access it on Orville. Also, if you don't clear any errors you have, if you don't clear any um, miscellaneous fee, any fee at all, then you find that you might be prohibited from accessing Orville. So make sure you're registered for the courses. If you're not certain how to register for the courses, check with um, Bruce, who is your student liaison or you can check with admin, you can check with SAS, or you can check with the office directly if you're having any issues. Once you're registered for the course and once your areas are in order, then you find that when you access or really, you can access it through the UA website. So what you do is you go on the UA website for Mona, then you click on current student, and then you see Orville come up on your right and you'll click on the OURVLE and it brings you to that platform. At that platform, you'll see all the courses that you're registered for for that semester. You'll see the lecturers for the course. You can send the lecturers email via that platform. The lecturers can send you notifications of any pending assignment, any pending tests um, for that course. You also find that for that um, on that platform, you can upload your assignments as well. You'll be able to do your exams. So, you know, with COVID and everything, we're trying to reduce the amount of persons that have to come in. What we can now do is that we can administer your exam via Orville. You find that once you have a working computer or a telephone with internet connections, then you can log on. The exam will be timed. You'd given, be given instructions by your lecturers, and then you will be able to 
undertake that exam. Benefit of oral as well is that once the MCQ exam, you'll be able to get a result immediately as the exam would be marked immediately by the software. But again, for you to be able to access ORFA, you must clear any financial arrears that you have, and you must ensure that you're registered correctly for that course. And you're going to need ORFA now more than ever because most of the university courses for this year will be offered in a blended format between online and face-to-face. -face. Blackboard Collaborate will be an interface that will be inside of your or within the folder of your Orville um, platform. What this allows is for the live classes to be held. So you'll basically be able to, con to um, communicate with your lecturer live in class. You'll be able to see what's going on, be able to share the lectures with you, explain whatever it is you need to do. It's pretty, pretty much similar to Zoom, just more tailored to teaching. So you'd have quite a few more um, advantages using Blackboard Collaborate. Also, we have a feature where we can record the lecture. So therefore you find that if you miss a lecture, then, um, then you can actually get the lecture, you can actually watch it at a more convenient time. There is no regulation that requires a lecturer to, to record the lecture. So I must say this to you that the, re the recording of the lecture is at the discretion of the lecturer. So do not think that you're entitled for it to be, le to be recorded. What the lecturers also can do is that some courses require for you to have a certain percentage of attendance and therefore, in an effort to get students to attend those courses, lectures might opt not to record those lectures in an effort to get you to log on. Um, it is difficult for the lecturers to teach a course, teach a class, and then be asked to repeat that class in the next session. You're doing a professional course. It's not a degree in terms of just doing something in general. It's a professional course and professional programs. All medical courses are professional programs. And because it's a professional course, there are different requirements for professional courses in comparison to general courses. So please, we expect that you conduct yourself in such a manner, understanding that you are in a profession, you're getting into a profession. Also, it is expected of you to um, represent that profession as best as possible. So that is all of um, Blackboard Collaborate. We have a software called Shadowware Software. Now this software requires for you to have some understanding as to the basic operations of computer, which I know everyone does in this modern era. Um, with the Shadowware software, what happens is that it simulates an X-ray room. It simulates a CT room. So what happens is before you even go out into the world, what we're offering here at the University of the West Indies and at School of Medical Radiation Technology is first world software, simulation software, where you're able to sit down around computers, you're able to see an X-ray room, bring patients into an X-ray room, um, get that patient ready for a procedure, position them for that procedure, and then simulate exposing them to radiation and then seeing what the x-ray would look like. So what this also helps you to do is improve on your positioning skills, improve on your exposure techniques, and it also allows you to see what errors um, will result when you do some things wrong. It, it gives you a taste of the world before you actually get into it. And it gives you an understanding as to how you can correct any issues you may have before you get into the working world. Now, as with all software, we're not going to say that it is perfect, but it is um, as good as simulation software is get currently for radiography courses. Um, when you get into your um, practicum simulation classes, with Mrs. Foster, what you find is that she'll teach you how to do the real life physical action. And the Shadowware software now will be what we basically mimic that action on and you can see the consequences of your action. Um, do understand that you're working in a professional discipline which involves the use of radiation. And as you will learn throughout the course that radiation has serious implications if it is used incorrectly. So you find that not only for the patient, but also for the user and for the public of anybody, in terms of anybody walking past. So you find that if you don't use this responsibility, um, well, then you might find that persons end up getting radiation illnesses, which can result in even cancer. And I'm certain you all love it, but we're in a environment and we're in an era where responsible use of radiation is practiced by every professional out there 
in the field of radiography. So this shadowware software again will expose to both CT technology and X-ray technology. And it will allow you, and don't worry about the, the modalities at this, this point as we go through, as we start next week, then you'll understand what each of them is, how it is that they're different, when do you apply each type of scanning um, modality, and you'll find that it's, it's, it's pretty much straightforward from there. Uh, my advice to students have always been that others have come before and done it. I don't see why you can't do it. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're just, um, we're just basically imparting knowledge to you as others have done to us in the past. We're here to help you and we expect you to um, put your best effort forward. Once you put your best effort forward, um, Bruce can tell you, then you find that you will find SMRT to be a, a very good choice. Radiography, like I've always said to every student as well, is one of those professions that you can take anywhere in the world. It is not a degree that you do in a subject. It's a profession. So anywhere in the world you go, every hospital has a radiographer. Every hospital needs somebody to operate the x-ray machine. We have a high migration rate currently from Jamaica with radiographers. Um, so we're trying to increase the output of students to facilitate that dirt that is becoming. We have a high migration to the United Kingdom, to USA, to Canada, to Switzerland, all of these countries. So the program is acknowledged and recognized internationally. The only thing they need to do is the state board exams and that is it, but they don't need to redo their degree. So you're coming to the University of the West Indies. Once you head out, your degree is accepted internationally. So it's not that, oh, I did my degree, I spent this money and then I can't use it overseas. No, once you go overseas, the only thing you need to do is to register with your state board and pass their state board exams or their national exams and you find that you can practice with your degree. So welcome to SMRT again. If you have any concerns, uh, again, do communicate that with Mr. Bruce or um, with the office or with the faculty or with the admissions or SAS office. I will see you all being well online next week for your first session. I think it should be in modalities. And if you have any further questions, you can ask and we can discuss them then. All right, until then, take care and good to meet you. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Well said, well said in a nutshell. Yes, and um, we, we look forward to the, sorry, we look forward to beginning next week. Um, as I said that um, the, the, um, we will do some introductory lecture, lectures, um, familiarize you with what the requirements are for each subject area, the modes through which those subjects will, or courses rather will be delivered, what are some of the requirements for assignments and mid-course and, and, other, and other assessments during the, during, the, during the semester and the year itself so that you can prepare yourselves ahead of time. Um, we were happy to have you share this time with us this morning, and we hope that we have provided for you some kind of a, some kind of um, preliminary information on our program. And we hope that you will enjoy your stay here, as also that you will really um, become a part of the SMRT family as we progress. I would I thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you on, on Monday or hearing you on Monday rather. Thank you.